All right, guys, I finally got it here. This beefy 14 bolt right here, four inch tube. This is from a 2015 2500 gas 2500. Got the eight bolt full floating axles. I'm about to rip into this and put my 456 gears in here and hopefully a locker. We'll see what happens, but this is it. So this has a GT5 code on it, which means it came with the taller gears. I think four tens or something like that. So that's all coming out anyway, but this thing is going in there. All right, so this is what makes the 14 bolts so great and actually the four nine inch or 10 inch if you wanna get the 10 inch ring. But the four nine inch is actually a GM patent that uh, Ford leased, or I don't even know how that works, but um, they got the patent from the 14 bolt. So this is a, uh, an, a third bearing for the pinion, so the pinion support. So almost every other axle doesn't have that. They have two bearings right here for the pinion and the 14 bolt and the four nine inch have a third pinion support. So that's what makes it super strong. But uh, so just letting you know, that's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna have to go in and start chopping here. All right, now that I got this all cleaned up, what I'm gonna do is throw this on with the provided bolts and line it up here. Oh God. There we go. Please don't fall on me. All right, so I was a little afraid that these wouldn't fit, but, uh, cause they were getting a little tight. But I figured out it was just full of gunk, so I gotta clean. All right, now that I have this on nice and tight, I can make my line where I'm gonna cut. Actually, this is not where I'm gonna cut. Where I'm gonna cut is the bottom of this all the way across. But I'm just gonna make this line, I'm gonna measure uh, how much this is right here, and then I'm gonna make my second line once I take it off. But I wanna show you, this is how much ground clearance we're, we're gonna gain, so let's see here. I am saving <laughs> a whole two inches here, all right? So that's a, that's a big two inches. That's uh, what she ever, said. Uh, hit your, the bottom, uh, middle of your differential on a rock, but you can definitely get stuck pretty easily, especially with how big this 14 bolts is. But uh, I'm pretty excited to cut all this off. It's a lot of work just to save the two inches, but when I'm done, this 14 bolt, this full float 14 bolt, is gonna have better clearance than the axle I have on my Colorado right now. So I'm super excited to get this going and throw it in the truck as soon as possible. All right, like I said, this distance right here, this is where I'm cutting right here. So I'm gonna line this up and make my mark. So if you notice, this right here is not sitting 90 degrees flush to this. It is, oh, I forgot what it is. Uh, I think there's like a six degree difference. I'll have to look it up. But this line is where I'm cutting down here and it's not gonna be a perfect 90 to this. It's gonna be a little bit uh, a little bit more, let's see, acute. So I think like six degrees or something like that. But I'll look that up and then make sure I uh, get that angle right. So what I'm gonna do now is the smaller bolts that this kit came with, I'm gonna bolt this back up just like this and then measure how far back I'm gonna cut right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up these holes right here and actually put these bolts in because I know they're directly across from each other. Um, so it would be these two 
but I'm putting these two in where these two are supposed to be. But the reason I'm doing that is because I can put this on here and not know that it's lined up side to side. So that's why I'm putting the bolts in and then I can trace around here and get my, uh, my reference marks to cut. All right, so now what's happening is I'm gonna trace this line all the way across the top of the, the housing here. And it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm definitely gonna have something to kind of follow. So let's see how this goes here. Right, so this line right here, the bottom line is where I'm cutting, right? And that actually follows this yellow line pretty closely. All right, so that's uh, it's kind of where I'm gonna cut. So I'm just gonna kind of figure it out and throw the blade on and start cutting. And again, I'm not cutting, uh, so to this face, I'm not cutting 90 degrees exactly. I'm Putting a little bit more of an angle on it, like I said, I gotta look that up in the instructions, but uh, I just gotta make sure I'm not cutting exactly 90 degrees to this, uh, this line. So, let's see how this works out. So as you can see, I cut, I have a lot of material to go down, so I cut pretty high. If you push this all the way up, these bolt holes don't line up. So that's a great thing for me. That means I didn't cut too low. So what I need to do is take this off first. Take this off. And what I need to do is clean this up and shave it down a little bit more so that once that once this fits on nice and snug, then I'm ready to weld it on. So there's the beginning stage of it. All right, so I hit it with the flap disc as much as I could and looks like we're pretty set pretty square I mean there's really no higher low spots anymore I think I might take out a little bit on this corner just to go down just a tiny bit but everything looks good I have all the screws in so all of them are in this one was kind of giving me a little bit of trouble but the rest of them are in so um, I think I'm gonna wait to heat this up and weld it after I clean everything up and I hit the the new ring gear and I and I shave down the the new ring gear so I'm gonna leave this clean up shave the new ring gear and then maybe um, tomorrow or the next day I'm going to heat this up and weld it so So I got all the mounts taken off and everything grinding down nice and smooth. I am gonna hit this all with a wire wheel, uh, clean it all up, all the surface rust here, and paint it with probably some um, stillet. So yeah, all that's prepped, and I'm moving on to the 
the uh, ring gear. So let's see how this one goes. All right, guys. So I got the housing all cleaned up, and now it's time for the ring gear. So this is the old ring and old carrier that I'm not going to use anymore. This is the new ring, the 456 gears that I'm going to run. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble this and take this ring off, put the new ring on this carrier that I'm not using anymore, and then uh, what I'm going to do is clamp it down, spin it, and grind it, and try to get it as close as I can to spec. And then uh, just before it is spec, I'm going to stop, and then hopefully I can take this to uh, a lathe and get it trued up uh, near the uh, near the end of the, the spec parameters that I need to get to. So let's disassemble this and install the new ring on this. Okay, so I have my new ring gear installed on the old carrier, and if this all goes correctly, I'm going to clamp it down, spin it, and start grinding it, and I can measure uh, the diameter as I go. So right now it is 10.5, actually it says 10.49, but uh, it's close enough, at least I can get a, a uh, gauge on how far I'm going in, and not go too far is what the, the situation is. So uh, let's try to grind some down and see what happens. All right, so I got the old carrier with the new ring clamped up. So I have the uh, regular 14 bolt races on these bearings right here. And I have my Dana 46 races on top of that. And then a piece of metal to just hold it. Same thing on the bottom. This is my Dana 46 race, the Dana 14, obviously that goes into the actual bearing. Um, the reason why I did that is because the bearing, the 14 bolt bearing sticks out past the race. So this is just kind of holding the race down and then uh, hopefully this works. So I'm going to kind of spin it by hand and then get the, uh, get the flat wheel, uh, flat disc and try to get down as much as I possibly can. So let's see if this works. All right, so as you can see, it's working, and I know I got a lot longer to go, but let's zero this. But let's give it a little measure here. I'm at 10.3, if you can see that. So I've taken down 0.2 so far, which is, I mean, not bad. So I'm almost halfway there. So I just gotta keep going, and uh, we'll see how this uh, turns out. All right guys, so I turned it down as much as I could by hand on the grinder, but I found a friend here in Santa Barbara, Jonathan. Uh, he's got a, uh, a lathe in his shop. So we put it on, and right now as I measure it, it's 10.09, 10.09, right? So uh, I want it to be 10.05-ish, so we're gonna turn it down and true it and make sure um, it's all nice and set. So when I put it in, it won't be wobbling and tearing up my bearings, my carrier bearings in there. So um, we're gonna true it up and see how this goes. This is Jonathan on, on the lathe, <laughs> hooking it up, keeping that bit nice and cool, doing some passes, truing it up. I'm super excited uh, he let me use uh, his lathe because I was a little worried having a, having a ring that wouldn't be true and wear down some, some carrier bearings, but this is definitely gonna get my mind at ease. And as you can hear, it's, it's kind of catching as it goes around, so I definitely had some high spots and some low spots. So this is truing it up, and uh, just lucky I got somebody that, can, that has a lathe in Santa Barbara. All right, so it's all buttoned up. Not welded yet, because I wanted to check the clearance in this thing, and it looks like it's gonna clear. I'm excited. Let's see if this little light works. It does not. Cool, the light does not work. 
but oh there we go a little bit light plenty of clearance looks like it's moving smooth I'm excited so everything's nice and tight all I gotta do is tack weld it and start welding it up nice super smooth all right so I'm checking all the clearances here and it looks like oof that is close. I heard that I need to shave this down right here and this right there. So I actually might do just a little bit of a shave before I even do this. So the, the new ring isn't even on here. I'm not really testing the clearance on that. I'm testing the clearance on this ARB uh, carrier right here. So everything looks good. I think that this is gonna get just a tiny bit tight down there. So, uh. I don't know, maybe I'll shave it. Oh, there we go. So now that it, I kind of mess with the, oh man, mess with the load, it is a little bit close. So let's see, maybe I'll shave that down a little bit. All right, much more clearance. Good. All right, I am happy with that. Much more clearance from those uh, those strengthening gussets right there. So, okay. So now I'm gonna throw the the new ring on, and uh, let's see if we have clearance with everything with the the cover all buttoned up. All right, everyone. This video is taking way too long, so you're gonna have to wait till the next video to watch me weld up the shave kit put in the ARB locker and install this one ton in the back of the Colorado. So while you're waiting for this next episode, check out these other videos I got for you.